Hey there, and welcome to Indie Wonderful, a collection of the sermons and biblical teachings of Reverend Henry Melton, who pastored what is now called Faith Church in Florence, Alabama for over 40 years. Some know him as Brother Henry, Brother Melton, or Pastor Henry. I'm so honored and grateful to know him as Papa. I'm David Holly, and I'm the oldest grandson of Henry Melton. It's such an honor to preserve these timeless recordings so that Papa's ministry can endure and continue to impact lives for future generations, all to the glory of God. So to you who are willing to hear, listen closely to what God wants to say to you today. Usually during summers, you know, they tell me the best church attendance is March, April, and May, but June, July, and August, you know, but oh my, what a thrilling it is to look out through there and see some smiling faces and a good-looking congregation. Greg's got a fresh haircut. Uh, amen. And hey, amen. Head for Mexico. My, my. Turn in your Bibles this morning to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. I'll tell you, our soldier looks good this morning. He's got a good haircut too. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 through 11. Jesus is a need meter. Let's say it. Jesus is a need meter. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Isaiah 55 verses, well, verses six through 11. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. The implication is there may be a time he can't be found. There might be a time he won't be near. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him to our God for he will abundantly, some of you need this this morning, you need to know that when God pardons, he abundantly pardons. When God forgives, that's it, he blots it out. Your past is gone forever. He puts your sins in the sea of forgetfulness and puts a sign up, no fishing allowed. Amen. Look at verse eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. I want you to get this. My thoughts are not your thoughts. That's why we want to get in the word. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. And here's the, the Gideons love these verses here. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void or not fulfilled, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. When God sends his word, he said it will not return to me void of fulfillment. There will be a fulfillment of what I have said in my word. Now the thought I wanna get across this morning is this, man treats our symptoms, but God meets our needs. About all that man can do. See, man's ways and God's ways are completely different. Man treats our symptoms, but God meets our needs. Recently, I heard a doctor on TBN, and I love doctors, and most doctors are great, but some doctors will get you hooked. I know that that's not popular, but some doctors will get you hooked on drugs. Well, I shouldn't have said that, maybe, but I love doctors. But anyway, uh, man, you know, when a fellow breaks the rule, breaks the law, and he becomes a menace to society, we put him behind bars. We put him in jail. When man becomes a threat to society, we change his environment. But that's not God's way. God changes the man. I, I like that. Man changes man's environment, but God changes the man. There's folks sitting here this morning that you'd be dangerous had God not got a hold of you. How many said amen? Some of us would be dangerous. Whoa, hallelujah. Had God not gotten a hold of us, there's a precious man here this morning that's fallen in love with Jesus. 
And, uh, so, several years ago, he and another man couldn't get along. And when they would see each other, about all they'd do is fight. But oh, not too long ago, he saw this man. And you know what he did? He reached out his hand and said, I want to shake your hand. And they embraced each other and he asked him to start going to church. Now that's what God can do. Man changes his environment, but God changes the man. Sometimes man gives us pills for our problems. He gives us pills to take away the pain. He gives us pills to take away the guilt. He gives us pills uh, to slow us down. He gives us pills to speed us up. But God gives us the gospel. He, he reaches inside and he heals and he makes whole and he ministers to the need of the whole man. I believe that salvation is for the whole man. Body, soul, mind, and spirit. Salvation is all inclusive. He was wounded for our transgressions, but by his stripes we were healed. Religion made by man, man made rules. He gives us rules to go by. But God writes his laws upon our heart. Amen. God puts his word not with pen and ink, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. God writes his word indelibly upon the tables of your heart. And when the storekeeper gives you too much change, the word says that's on your heart, do unto others as God would have others do unto you. When you're tempted to steal something, that word that's put on your heart, thou shalt not steal. When your eyes begun to wander from your mate to somebody else's mate, the word says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thank God. I'm glad we got more than rules to live by. God didn't just tell us to turn over a new leaf. He gave us a new life. And he changed us. And he's writing his word upon our heart. That's what makes you like Jesus. That's what changes your life. It's when the word of God begins to break through. The Bible says receive with meekness, openness, readiness, obedience. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls, your mind, your emotions, your will, your desires. You are, your, 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 your soul, actually you're saved, ready for heaven by the blood of Jesus. But the word of God saves you from a carnal Christian life. I said, the blood saves you from hell, but the word of God saves you from living a defeated, carnal, selfish, frustrated life. The engrafted word. When the word becomes a part of you, amen. And then in Acts chapter three, we're told of a lame man sitting uh, in, with a cup begging for alms. There he was at the beautiful gate in Acts chapter three. Had been there all of his life, lame from his mother's womb. And all of his life, he'd been nothing but a beggar. And uh, all he was asking for was just a few coins, just enough to make it today, just enough to eat today, just enough to get by. And for many years, man was treating his symptom but how many knows that Peter and John came along one day and the Holy Spirit began to rise up in those men and Peter said, silver and gold, have I none but such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the Bible said his ankle and his knee, his legs began to receive strength. He began to leap and to walk and to praise God. He asked for arms, but God gave him legs. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Amen. Man treats the symptoms, but God meets the needs. I believe our God is in business this morning. I believe he's here today and he's interested in you. He sees every sparrow that falls. He's concerned about every single person here today. Every time you wash your hair, God takes a recount because he knows the hair on our head. He knows a whole lot about us. This world calls us by number, but God knows our name. 
I was amazed a few years ago, a Holy Ghost filled Baptist preacher by the name of William Branham. Uh, he became a famous preacher and uh, we, we went to hear him preach in Birmingham, Alabama. We, we knew this man in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. We worshiped with him. I forgot his name now, but we were in Birmingham in a big auditorium and all of a sudden William Branham got up to preach and the Holy Spirit, you could, you could tell the Holy Spirit was on this man. He pointed at this man from Lawrenceburg, called his name, told him what street he lived on, told him what was wrong with him. That's a word of knowledge in case you are interested in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. There's a word of knowledge. There's a supernatural knowledge. You see, God knows all about us. God knows our name. He knows everything there is to know about us. And he loves us and he's interested in meeting our need. Now, God made us with certain needs. First of all, there's a need for security. We all have a need for security. We want job security. We want health insurance. We want all the security that we can get. But many of us have learned that there's no such thing as real sure health security, job security. The only security we have is in the Lord. And we have security. He meets our needs. He meets that need for security. He's our shepherd. He protects us and he provides for us and he ministers to our need. Another need that we have is a sense of belonging. The Bible teaches us in the book of Psalms 68 verse 6, he sets the solitary in families. I meet so many people that feel rejected. I meet so many people that are lonely. They're so lonely. They're so Lonely. Maybe a companion has turned their back on them. Or maybe an employer has fired them or, or dismissed them unjustly. Or something has happened. Somebody has done something to cause them to feel lonely and rejected and isolated and all alone. And for that reason, the spirit of suicide is epidemic in our nation because of this isola isolationism and this loneliness, this, this uh, uh, burning uh, loneliness that exists in so many people's lives, but the Bible teaches us that we have a sense of belonging in our Lord. We, uh, but we belong to him. First of all, we belong to him because he created us. And secondly, we belong to him because he redeemed us by his blood. When several began to leave the Lord and stop following Jesus, he said to the disciples, will you also go away? And Peter said, Lord, where could I go? Where, there's an old famous song, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. Ruth, when her husband died and her mother-in-law told her to go back to her people, she said, wherever you go, I'm going. Wherever you lodge, I'm gonna lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. And so this sense of belonging is only met in the Lord Jesus Christ. To know that you belong to someone. You belong to him. You belong to God. God belongs to you. You're his and he's yours. There's nothing quite like it. There's nothing like it in the whole wide world because God has reserved that there are certain needs in your life that no person can meet. There are needs that you have your companion cannot meet. God didn't intend for your companion to meet all. Some of you are frustrated this morning because your companion's not meeting some of your needs. That's not the way God made you. God didn't make you for your mate to meet all your needs. There are certain needs he reserves for himself. One of them is that sense of belonging, to belong to him by creation and to belong to him by redemption. Another need that God wants to meet in our life this morning, and I'm talking to somebody this morning, you feel so empty. You feel, what, what, do, I, what do I have to show for my life? What do I have to, and a lot of times we're thinking of materialism. We're thinking of a, a, a earthly accomplishments. We're thinking in man's term. We're thinking the way man thinks because we don't have millions or thousands to leave our children when we leave here, because we don't have houses and cars and lands and, and popularity and position, all that. But folks, the greatest fulfillment in all the world is just simply to be doing what the Lord wants you to do. 
That's all. The greatest fulfillment in all the world is knowing that you're right where God wants you to be and you're doing just what God wants you to do. I promise you that's the greatest fulfillment in all the world to know that you're pleasing your heavenly Father and doing what he's called you to do. Amen, 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 amen. David said, I've got a shepherd and he leads me beside the still waters, living water to drink. He calls me to lay down in green pastures. He restores my soul. I'm literally amazed at how you can be dog tired. I don't know why we say that, but I'm just dog tired. Well, we've seen old lazy dogs or tired dogs. You know, I guess that's why we grew up that. How many has been real, real tired at night? You've put in 14, 15, 16 hours. And oh, when you lay down, boy, how many, say, how many knows it feels good to lay down? How many enjoys laying down? Come on, don't tell a lie. Hey, okay. Hey, man. And aren't you amazed? You can get up the next morning. Wow. And you've been restored. You've been, you feel like brand new. Where, where's this world at? Hey, let me get at it. Hey, man, let me get at it. It's amazing how you can lie down at night seven or eight hours, wake up restored, refreshed, ready to go again. I've got news for you. I know somebody that can not only refresh you physically, he can refresh you, refresh you emotionally. He can refresh you mentally and spiritually. You can be refreshed and restored. He restores my soul. Amen. And then he said, my cup runneth over. He anoints my head with oil. And my cup run. You know, the, the worst trouble in all the world is head trouble. Do you know that? The worst trouble in all the world, and I'm not talking about sinus. I'm not talking about headaches. Lord knows we've got enough of that around here. Amen. But it's not thinking properly. Amen. When you get saved, you get a brand new heart. Amen. You're ready for heaven. You're born again. You're a new creature but you got an old head. And if you got an old head and a new heart, you've got problems. Amen. You've got to get your mind renewed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That word transform, metamorphosis, like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. I'll tell you, if you get your thinking right, you'll come out of that cocoon. Amen. If you get your thinking corrected, you begin to fly. You begin to mount up on wings as eagles. You begin to run and not be weary. You'll walk and you won't faint. Amen. Bring your mind in conformity to the Word of God. What sort of things are lovely and honest and have a good report? There'll be any virtue, there'll be any praise. Think on these things. You've got a choice what you're going to think of. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. As a man thinketh, so is he. So you, you need to have your mind renewed. He restores my soul. That's what Jesus wants to do for you. He wants to meet somebody's needs this morning. He wants to restore your soul. And then he said, my cup runs over. My cup runs over. I tell you folks, your life can be full. Your life don't have to be half empty. You can live a full life. God wants your life so full that you're running over and blessing somebody. The implication is my, my cup runneth over. That means I've got more than I need for myself. I'm sharing with somebody else. Amen. I believe that folks that love the Lord and folks that know God and folks that serve the Lord ought to be so full they're just bubbling over, bubbling over. Amen. And others are wondering, what, what have you been up to? What, what makes you tick? What's so different about you? Amen. God wants to put a bounce inside of you. He wants to put a spring in your step, a song in your heart, a joy in your soul. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Not too long ago, I walked in the bank and the teller said, what you, what's so sad about life? Oh, I felt so bad. Here I am a preacher. Preach on Sunday like I'm preaching right now. On Monday, go over there. Have a long face. I promise myself she'll never see me like this again. No, no, no. Get all my friends out in the bathroom. Hey, 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 man. But I want to uh, go, go out with joy. Therefore with joy shall you draw water from the bells of, wells of salvation. 
You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. When we go out, let's go out with joy. Go out with peace. My cup runneth over. Another need, and I've got to close. Another need that God wants to meet for somebody here this morning is he wants to deliver you from fear. There's somebody in this building that God wants to set free from fear, fear of the future. Fear, some of you mothers are fearing that you won't be allowed to live to raise your children. Um, all mothers, that fear comes against them. All kinds of fears within. God wants to deliver you from the spirit of fear this morning. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear evil for thou art with me. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and the spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind. And there's a cure for fear. That's when you just crawl up in your father's arms, snuggle up in the arms of God, and just fall in love with him afresh and in you and let him love you. Just let, humble yourself like a little child and just snuggle up to God and say, God, I'm going to embrace you today. I'm going to draw nigh to you today, and you've promised to draw nigh to me. I promise you that the love of God will cast out fear. I've heard my dad say so many times, say when he was a little boy up here in Wayne County, Tennessee, his dad would carry him hunting. Even before the, day, the sun would rise and they'd go hunting, it'd be dark in those woods. And Dad said they'd hear all kinds of varmints and creatures making all kinds of weird noises. He said his little heart would just go pitter-patter. He'd just get so frightened, he'd reach over and grab his dad's great old big hand in his. And he said, all my fears left. When I just feel my dad's hand in mine, he had a hold of me. I thought my dad could get, take care of bears and lions and tigers. He said, I didn't worry about nothing. Oh, put your hand in the hand of the man that steals the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the man that comes to see. Amen. He'll take care of those fears in your life. And then finally, another need. And oh, I'm so grieved. So many churchgoers, so many millions of Americans today are, are really uh, plagued with a spirit of guilt guilt and condemnation. There could very well be somebody sitting in, in this congregation this morning that you feel so guilty. Something you didn't do. Something you did that you shouldn't have done. Oh, you feel so guilty. You feel so guilty. Your children's up and gone and you feel like you failed them in so many ways. And you hadn't been a good companion and you hadn't been a loving husband like you should. And you hadn't been a devoted wife. Oh, there's so many ways. In fact, if you hadn't done anything wrong, you still will be plagued with guilt. Because Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they passed the guilt on to us. They passed that nature of guilt and condemnation. And the human family, the human family is born with guilt and condemnation. But I'm glad to report this morning, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. The first thing that Adam and Eve did when guilt came, they hid behind a tree. They hid behind a tree. But oh, I'm glad today that we no longer have to hide behind a tree. We can abide. Instead of hide, we can abide in Him. If we abide in Him and His words abide in us, and we can hallow His name. Hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. It's not the will of God for you to be defeated by guilt and condemnation. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, came down from heaven to deal a death blow to guilt and condemnation. And that's why the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And so in Adam we are hiding, but in Christ we're abiding. In Adam we're hiding, but in Christ we're hallowing his name. We're inviting his presence in our lives. In Adam, we're hiding from God. That's why a lot of sinners don't go to church. It's not natural for the men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But God wants to deliver you from guilt and condemnation this morning. Man treats the symptoms. A lot of people with guilt and condemnation, they lie on a psychiatrist's couch and pay 50 or or $100 a trip, but it doesn't do any good. 
I said, it doesn't do any good. A lot of times they take drugs to drown out their guilt and condemnation. But it doesn't do any good. Not too long ago, I saw on television this man that uh, several, I think several years ago, uh, he had uh, posed as a friend to this, this neighbor lady that lived on a farm and she and her children and fell in love with her supposedly. But uh, then at, three weeks after they married, he, he killed her. And uh, so he, he, did it, he did it in such a way that made the people think it was an accident. But her, the girl's mother became suspicious and they, and they exhumed her body and found out that he had given her poison and he had actually murdered her. And he, he vanished for 17 years and he was on an island somewhere, married a 20-year-old girl and just not too long ago, they, they found him and they captured him and they arrested him. And oh, he said, I'm so glad that the, my running days are over. I'm so glad. He said, I've had a tough time living with myself. I've had a rough time living with my guilt and condemnation. And it was a relief for that man to be caught. It was a relief from that, for that man to go to jail because the guilt was eating him up. But oh, praise God, this morning you can get rid of your guilt. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, just as if I had never sinned. And if you're here this morning, man may treat your symptoms, but God will meet your need today. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we lift up this congregation today, and every person here that has a need Lord Jesus, if it's guilt, if it's fear, if it's that lonely feeling, if it's that empty, defeated feeling, Lord, if it's that insecure feeling, whatever it may be, oh God, I pray this morning that that person will allow you to reach into their life and minister to that need today. How many this morning are battling fear? Would you raise your hand? A fear has gripped your heart. How many of you, the devil's tried to make you feel like you're a defeated person? You had not accomplished the things. That, yes, anybody else? You just feel so defeated. You just feel so empty and so defeated. Oh, God has got something good for you this morning. How many of you this morning, you just don't have that sense of security. You feel so insecure. You, you worry about the future. You worry about your children. You worry about the uh, things uh, about God meeting your need. You worry about your health and, and you're concerned and you feel so insecure. How many would need security? You need a deeper security today. Wonderful, wonderful. Father, I pray right now that those that have a need in their life, they'll respond to your love today and they'll allow you to come this morning and get their needs met in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together while we sing. And I want to invite you to come to Jesus today. Jesus is present in the service, very near to you. Let's come to the front right now. Let's get our needs met from the Lord. Let's let Jesus take away our guilt and that old frustrated, defeated feeling. Jesus will make you feel like somebody. He'll make you feel special again. He'll make you feel important to Him because you are important to Him because He died for you. You come this morning. Amen. And let Jesus help you today. Amen. 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 And they've already started coming. You come this morning. God awaits you here. He loves you. Man treats your symptoms, but God will meet your needs today. Thank you for listening to this powerful message, and I pray you would allow the word you receive today to produce great things in your life. If you're listening on an audio podcast platform, be sure to leave a comment and give my papa a five-star rating. If you're watching or listening on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and share your thoughts and any prayer requests you may have in the comment section. Finally, help us continue to spread the word of God by sharing this recording with someone else today. May God bless you greatly. Isn't he wonderful?